Hey folks, it's Cal, and we're talking clutches today. Not this clutch, the clutch that's in my car, in my Legnum. And I want to talk to you about clutch bleeding, because I got this very wrong, and the particular clutch I've got fitted is very sensitive to the clutch bleeding and height and whatnot. So I want to run you through the process that TME Steve, or Steve from Transformance Mechanical Engineering, has uh, provided to me on the right way to do this, otherwise you'll just end up going in circles with your clutch bleed. So number one, as Steve said, set your preferred pedal height to match your brake, which, you know, I'm quite comfortable with that. It's been that way forever. And that's done with a very large 14 millimeter uh, nut on the back of the clutch up there, that, that one. That's how you set your pedal height. Next thing you do in sequence is adjust the, cr the crutch, the clutch adjustment rod. And it's that silver thing there in the middle that you can't see the end of because, you know, there's no space. But basically, this rod has an adjuster nut. See that brass colored thing there? So what you'll see is, I'll see if I can point to this for something for you without dropping the camera or otherwise making you vomit with the camera movements. So that is your lock nut there on the back of it, on the back of it, this side. And once you loosen that lock nut, if you have a six millimeter spanner, you can turn this silver rod. I use a pair of vice grips. But what Steve says is, first of all, wind this rod in this way. As you can see, there's quite a bit of thread poking out. Not all the way, but most of the way. That's how you start the bleeding process. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is just give the clutch a bit of a whack. Okay. Right. So let's talk about these horrible, horrible, horrible slave cylinders that are on the Mitsubishis. This is your slave cylinder. So your hydraulic line comes in the bottom here and pressure goes in and pushes this piston out against the fork. The fork pivots and so inside, if you're lucky, you'll see my throw out, be uh, throw out bearing there. So let's see if I can move this for you. Oh, so, so I've got to try and move the camera. Can you see that wiggling? Very slight. There, that's me moving the clutch form. Okay, so bleeding the slave cylinder. You have to uh, bleed the air out of the slave very carefully. So what I was doing was wrong. What I was doing wrong was I was, uh, with one hand, I was loosening the bleed nipple up here, up there. And then with this other hand, I was pulling this fork towards me with my right hand like this, right? Like that. So when that thing's loose, you'll be able, that rod inside the car is wound all the way in. You'll be able to pull this with your hand. What I was doing was I was squeezing this while the nipple was loose and finding that some air came out. Then I would let go of this and then hold it again and release the nipple again. Find some more air came out. Then I would tighten the nipple and then press this and loosen the nipple and more air came out and I thought to myself there cannot be that much air in the system and there isn't you're letting more air in by letting go of this lever so if you pull this lever in tighten that nipple and then just let go and it flicks that way as the piston inside the cylinder here flies back sorry flies back that way what will happen is it sucks air in through the seals inside here so every time you repeat the process, you're just letting more air in. So what's the trick? It's actually quite simple. Do the same process, but once you tighten that nipple and you're holding this lever in here, release it slowly. And by slowly, watch my thumb. Like that slowly. I'll do it again, right? So I've, imagine I've got that pulled in. I'm going to close that nipple after, so I'm going to pull in with the nipple open and squeeze the air out, then close the nipple with my other hand, and then one of the nipples closed, 
just slowly, slowly let that piston move back out. Do that a few times, there'll be no air left. After that, you can bleed, if you haven't already, you can bleed the line. And so by bleeding the line, what you're doing is you're pushing the pedal um, a little bit with someone in the car and opening the, the, uh, the bleed nipple here. I used a vacuum bleeder for that, so I bled the line with a vacuum bleeder. But it's, it la it's this last component of bleeding, bleeding the cylinder itself that you have to do with your hand, and you do it slowly. I've done that on this new clutch previously with this, you know, it's like an e this is an Evo flywheel with an Evo clutch uh, pressure plate and a high blah 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 blah. It's like over two ton clamp. I could not get this thing to have any play in the clutch pedal at all um, and be able to select gears. Once I bled this properly, I now have free play in the pedal. So a little bit of when you push the pedal, there's a little bit of like no pressure at all, and then you can feel it engaging on the piston here. You can feel that and now I can get gears. So that little trick of that slow method of bleeding the air out of the cylinder is what made the clutch able to be bled. I hope that helps someone, because it certainly helped me.